Hey folks, Eric Rodoy here, Director of Historic Preservation at Historic Deerfield. Um, I'm back in the attic of the Krillman House. A little while back I made a video on the, the roof framing of this building. Uh, in it I mentioned this feature behind me, this little room. Today what I'd like to do is take you inside, show you the room, and, uh, and then take a, a close look at how it was constructed. The, the house itself was built in 1730, uh, but this, this room here is an added feature. And uh, if we take a, a hard look at the, the materials used in its construction, what we're gonna see is there's a mix of, uh, of some new material, meaning material that was uh, new at the time of, that it was built, but there's also a lot of uh, reused, recycled material in it. And that's uh, some of the stuff I wanna show you because it's pretty interesting, um, you know, what the material was originally used for and, and how it's used in, in uh, this piece of construction. So why don't we go in, take a look at it. As you can see, it's located right off uh, the present day access up into the attic. In this room, it's at, at the south end of the, uh, of the building here. So as we go in, you'll see there's really not much to the room. Very simple, small room. Um, the width you're seeing here it's just over 11 feet in its width and uh, we go inside here take a look it's just about nine feet this is the uh, north-south portion of the building here that's that's just about nine feet but um, you know Sure, what tells us this was a living space, space rather than just storage is, is how it was treated. You know, what we've got, we've got, uh, you know, plaster walls here and plaster ceiling throughout these guys. And then right here, that's, that's the rafter to the, uh, to the house itself. And instead of just leaving the rafter exposed, it was cased off before before the uh, room was plastered so there was a conscious effort to hide that guy there and then if you look down towards ground level what we've got here we've got a baseboard here so there's a degree of finish there and if I turn around and look at the door opening what you'll see is that here's our board and batten door, right? But down at floor level, right here, we've got a threshold to the door. So, you know, instead of just leaving sort of bare floor there, uh, a threshold was installed. So there might've been some sort of floor covering, you know, very simple floor covering in this room. So, you know, a space like this, you know, most likely could have been, you know, I'd say used uh, for, as, you know, a place for domestic help to stay. So, um, you know, if at some point in time in the history of this house, there was a, you know, uh, let's say a, a servant or maybe a hired man out in the fields, uh, this would be a place where they could have for their accommodations. Need to do more research once our library opens, get a sense of who was in this building, say, throughout the 19th century. Um, maybe that'll tell us more about this room. All right, so that's the space itself. Why don't we go out, take a look and see how it was constructed. All right, let me just take a second and point out um, some of the materials that we're gonna be looking at. This area right here, this provides a good representation um, of how the entire room's constructed. So, you know, in the difficult spaces around the corners here, um, it's essentially more of this. So what we see here, these verticals right here, these are our studs, okay? And these are, uh, like I said, recycled um, uh, boards, planks. They're about an inch and a half uh, thick. And this is essentially a plank wall. So these, uh, these studs are just nailed into the floorboards down, down here at the bottom. 
um, and then run up and um, and uh, as you see up top here these are just nailers and what they're doing they're providing a, a, a surface for uh, this accordion lath to be nailed to um, at essentially on the inside of the ceiling and wall junction so uh, they're, they're just there to allow a, a good solid surface to, to fasten into and then um, this is our accordion lath or split board lath and that's providing a, a surface for the uh, the lime plaster to be applied onto and we see the the plaster keys right here all this stuff um, you know sort of worked through the gaps in the um, in the the board and you know push through when it was wet and they slough over and provide a, a, a key that mechanical fastening for the um, the plaster to uh, it, uh, essentially adhere to so um, so this is essentially our wall system and um, uh, and like I said it's it's replicated around the corners um, and we'll take a look and see you know what materials are used there and take a close look um, one last feature is this guy down here that's running uh, horizontally across and that's the back side of our our baseboard and we'll take a close look at that and uh, and see what that can tell us so what we can see of the trim work you know here baseboard you know baseboard continuing down uh, can't see much of the back sides of the door casings but um, the trim work and the split board lath all this appears to be uh, new material new meaning new at the time that the uh, the room was constructed and um, you know there if you look closely you can see those vertical up and down saw marks you know um, one thing that's absent in the construction of this room is any circular sawn material. I haven't found one piece of circular sawn uh, wood used in the construction of this. And, you know, generally that's a, you know, we, we see sort of circular sawn stuff showing up maybe late, you know, say late 40s, uh, definitely by the 1850s. Um, but it's just unusual that not one stick of anything in this has those telltale circular saw marks all we're seeing is vertically sawn material all right let's take a look at the uh the studs used to, to build this room here so you know starting with these guys here this one uh let's see this guy right here in front of us you know got a nice sort of somewhat clean piece of wood, right? Um, what's unusual about this guy though is, if you notice the edge, it's not a sawn piece. It's been split out of, uh, of another piece of wood here. Maybe even this one off to the side, other side of the door. But um, if you look closely, and I'll try and throw some raking light on this. If you look at the surface of this material, uh, we might be able to pick up the up and down saw marks. There they are right in sort of the center of the screen. Um, try and get a better detail of it for you. But, you know, that guy looks like a nice fresh piece of lumber, you know. But you look over here, these two, this one here, and this one right here. And we, are you picking up on the surface of these guys? Look at that. This piece of wood's seen some service. Same with this one over here. Try and get some better light on it for you. You know, it's got two of the edges too. Are kind of weathered out. We've got some powder post in them. You know, um, but just really beat up surface. And this guy too is split out on its edge instead of just being sawn. So, you know, 
doesn't seem to be another set of nail holes in these guys. And, and you know, these are scattered around the other walls of the building, uh, of, of sorry, the room. Um, but you, you know, you've got this, this type of material being used. I don't know if this was a, say a floorboard out of an outbuilding or something, uh, but it's definitely seen some service. So this is a little bit of a tight space I'm in, as you can see, it's right where the, the rafters are coming down. I'm around the corner here, but the next thing I want to talk about is this guy here with the white. Oh, let me get him focused in for you. This guy here, if you notice it. So that guy's pretty interesting. It's got paint and a lot of weather on its surfaces. And what we got there, and this is used uh, elsewhere. Some of these, I think are all coming from the same piece of original construction. But that's a, um, that's a rail from an early fence. And what we're seeing is the paint on it and where there is no paint that's where the individual pickets were so i just wanted to take a second and show you guys another example of one of these uh fence rails here this was found up in the uh attic structure of a house here on the street that was getting worked on and had been reused both uh this rail these pickets here they were, they were just being used as nailers to catch, uh, I think, some of the lath and plaster finished material that was up in the room. But you can see here, there are those telltale sort of ghost marks of where the pickets were located on this. It's very similar to what we're seeing up here in the attic of the Creelman house. So these guys, you know, they're front and the back side this guy just line up like that you can see how that didn't get paint there so that's what's going on there hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what we're looking at now if you come and look at the next one over here this guy what's cool about this guy is look at the surface here it's a nice, sort of smooth, plain surface. And here's another, oops, another one here. And these two guys, what they are, they're the remnants of a early a plank framed window. If you look closely, you see that worked corner right here. All right, that's a molded edge to it. And then check them back up here. We can focus in on it. Right here, that's where it would catch the upper sash. All right, and there's the jog and the lower sash. I'll fit in right down there. So whether this piece came out of this house or some other house, who knows? But that's these two guys are parts of a plank frame window. Here's the back side. There's that where the sash would be held. The upper sash there. And then the lower sash would have been held in this rebate right here, All right? Pretty interesting. What's really cool about that, these is the remnants of paint that are still on them. It's a red, very thin red paint finish. Hopefully you can read that molded edge there. So after I got done up in the attic, I decided to come outside and pull one of the storm windows off here to take a closer look at the, at the windows. So um, what we've got, if we take a closer look, 
we've got our plank frame window here. Never mind that triangular pediment that's that's been added in the late 19th century. But uh, if we look closely, right here, we've got our pin holding the frame together. It's thick stock. And uh, if you look closely at the details, sure enough, here we have that, that molded edge. And then right around the corner here, if you look right here, here's the rebate to hold the supper sash. Now these guys are pretty gunked up with paint. Um, the piece we had up in the attic looked like it only had about one layer of red paint on it. It'd be interesting to take a sample off of here, see if we've got red paint on it. Those parts up in the attic, they could have came from a say window in the house here, maybe on the back side of it that got removed, maybe when the house was moved or at some point in time. But it sure looks like those pieces match up pretty well to these guys. So that there's that's a plank frame window for you. All right, let's take a look at this board and batten door. Um, as you can see here, so you know we've got our vertical boards here, two of them, right, and our horizontal battens, three of them there. Um, and this guy is real thin. If you take a look at this, if you can see it, but this guy's only about maybe three quarters of an inch thick. And um, when I was taking a a look at this guy it's real interesting um, because these two boards rather than just sort of being butted up tight with one another or um, having a, a bit of a lap you know to, uh, to cover this joint um, when I took a look up at the top and I'll show you a detail of that this door is actually splined together which means there's there uh, there are grooves routed on the, the edges of these two boards here and then a, a thin uh, piece of wood slides down in, be, in between those. It's independent of the two boards and, uh, and fills that, that joint. Um, so th that was kind of interesting to find on that guy. Um, so this is all hand planed. Uh, these are hand planed boards here on both, both sides, uh, hand planed battens. And when you take a, a, a close look at these, uh, the way the battens are fastened onto it, these are the, those um, double struck wrought nails. So, so the heads of these nails, it's not quite a, a, a T head nail, um, but it, what it is is it, it just has uh, two hammer blows to it rather than the, the four of a, uh, of a rose head nail. So, um, so that's kind of interesting, that's kind of neat. I'm going to rake my light across the surface of, of these boards here and uh, what I want you to look for is kind of the sort of the rippling, uh, you know, the undulating pattern. And what that is is that shows that it's got a hand planed finish to it. See that? See how the surface has the tool marks of the plain iron still left in, in it? See when you look at it sort of straight on you don't see that stuff but a little bit of raking light or just lightly running your hands over the surface of the board and it brings out those plane marks so we know we've got a hand plane door here the other thing about it is the hardware so this door has an early version of a Norf Norfolk latch here. All right. If you look closely at it, you see the handle. So it's a forged handle. All right. Got our thumber there. And then look at the profile of this back plate. Let's see if I can lighten things up. There you go. If you notice that, the top. And at the bottom so that's an early Norfolk latch so if, if we look closely at this door and look carefully at it it tells us that it's actually been rotated 
180 degrees and it swung not into the attic like you see here but um, it would have swung from this jam here into the room now whether that happened in this location or where it was installed previous previous to this I'm not quite sure at this moment but I'll tell you I'll show you how we know this sort of the giveaways are in here so we have uh, sort of the rebate there and also where is it there down below showing that this was the hinge side <clears throat> and there's the location of, of the keeper of this keeper here it's presently mounted on the side of the door so all this stuff could have been in a previous location but then sort of reused here the other thing the other item is is the latch so if we look at this side of the door there's the bar mechanism for the back side of the, the latch. But if we look below this batten, right here, you can see the location of that same latch. And it was originally mounted on this side of the door. And that's where this is upside down. So where the thumber is here, that would go right in there here are screw marks for it and again I'll try and capture this but if you look carefully right here you're gonna see the ghost of the profile of that latch you're gonna see the outline of it let me see if I can capture that here there it is upside down so that's the bottom and that's the top so that hardware was mounted on on this side of the door and then it was taken and reinstalled all right so based on what we've looked at uh, it'd be hard to come up with a definitive date for this this room data construction um, we got a ton of recycled material that looks like it's come from either you know, later part of the uh, 18th century or early part of the 19th century. We've got new material that could be um, dated to, you know, sort of up to the mid 19th century. And um, sort of the, the one thing that we can definitely say, it's got the, the late style cut nails. So it can't be any earlier than say, you know, 1835, 1840 or so. So probably what we got here is a mid 19th, mid to maybe a third quarter of the 19th century piece of construction. Next thing to do would be to go and uh, hit the archives, dig through some, uh, some documentation and see if we can find anything about what was going on in this house during that period. You know, who owned it, uh, what they were doing, um, you know, maybe some census records, things like that. I hope you have uh, enjoyed taking a, a look at this space. Um, plan on looking at some more, more buildings, some more materials, things like that. So keep an eye out for future videos. In the meantime, take care. Uh, and I'll catch you later.